everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nico. I'm a third year medical student and in today's video we're going to be talking about the things that you need to keep in mind when filling out your MCAS application so that you can have a successful application to medical school. As always, timestamps are going to be down below so you can just jump to the part of the video that is going to serve you best. But if you do want to stick around for the whole entire video, let's get straight on to the first tip. So when you do your MCAS application, one of the first questions that MCAS is going to ask you is are you a disadvantaged student? When filling this out, my advice is to just be honest. I was kind of worried about this question because I didn't want it to look like I was pulling the Latino card or I was milking the system or I was trying to elicit pity. But my advice is to remember that there's a reason why they're asking this on your application. And if the answer is yes, all they want is honesty. If you click that you are a disadvantaged student, there will be provided space to talk about why you consider yourself a disadvantaged student. And what I recommend you guys doing is really just sticking to the facts for this section. Just explain why are you a disadvantaged student. And the way I ended it was I ended it with a, you know, with a, a sentence or two about how this led to personal growth, how my experience led me to be the person that I am today. You can even connect it to medicine. And that's all I have to say about that section. That was a quick one. The second section that I want to talk about is your grades. You are going to be required to put every single one of your undergraduate courses into AMCAS one by one. Do not wait until the last minute for this. Like, it really will suck if you do that. You need to go one by one and put every single course in. I recommend you guys just doing one semester a night from your very first day, um, from the day you start your application, and that's going to help you a lot. Also, when you fill out your application, make sure that you are looking at an official transcript because the official transcript sometimes differs from the unofficial and you know you want to make sure that there aren't any discrepancies because everything will be double checked by amcas once you put in your application my last tip about this section is being honest with yourself when saying if a class is science or not science use your best judgment if a course that you took was not considered science at your undergraduate um, institution you can say it was science if the course material was science based if amcas doesn't agree with you they'll just let you know that it's not science and then you can just forward them your syllabus from your course proving that it was science based or that most of the content was you know scientific in nature and if you do that they'll switch it back to science so just be honest with yourself and you know classify your classes not based on their classification at your university but rather on the content that you've learned in the course the next section we're going to be talking about is the works and activity section this section is it can be hard because there's a lot of writing i recommend you starting this early really reflecting about the things that you did starting from your first year in undergrad and remember that a lot of people are going to have the same things almost everyone's going to talk about volunteering research um i don't know like it's kind of generic what thing what people are going to write so think if there's anything that you did that makes you stand out so for me i talked about study abroad that was one of my works and activities and also make sure you make use of your description so again everyone's going to talk about their volunteer experience but in your description make sure you talk about how your role in that you know in that experience was different than everyone else's what did you grab from that experience that made you unique to every other applicant out there so the personal statement is the next thing that we're going to be talking about and it's stressful you have to write you know an essay about why you want to become a doctor you have to make sure it's unique there's a lot going on but remember that when you write your personal statement and this might be an unpopular opinion i'm not really sure i don't think you should have 10,000 people reading it some people say to send everyone your personal statement and get everyone's comments. I feel like if you do that, it's going to lose you. What I think is important is that you have one person of you know professional background read it and someone who knows you well. So I had career services read it for me, make sure that I was like on the right track. And I also had a family member actually read it, like a family member that I trusted, you know, to be honest with me, to make sure that the grammar was right, that everything I was writing was sounded good uh, but remember that you do want to make sure that 
you don't lose your voice in your personal statement, which is easy to do when you have 20,000 people reading it. Also, try to think of a theme. For me personally, I did not want my opening statement to be this dramatic, crazy, you know, fake scene that, you know, some people create in their personal statement as their attention grabber. I did have an attention grabber. I did try to, you know, reel in my, you know, my reader, but I tried to do it as me. Also, make sure that you have, you know, some type of theme. So for me, I have family all over the world. I traveled my whole entire life. So my theme was traveling and I incorporated that into medicine. So make sure you find your theme, find what works for you. Write out your, you know, your personal statement, have someone read it, have someone, you know, a professional background read it as well. But for me, I don't recommend having too many people read it because you wanted to have your voice in it after all. And finally, you want to make your school list. Like when you, your last part of your application, you get all the way done and you fill in your schools. And you can make a whole video of this, but when you're doing this, make sure that you know you're applying to schools that you are going to you know want to go to that you actually have an interest in and remember don't get discouraged you know if a school says that their average mcat score is a 515 that means that people with a 508 also got in as well as people with higher than 515. an average is an average and you don't need to have that average to get into the school with that being said thanks for watching this video make sure you drop me a comment what questions do you have about the amcas application what do you think about everything i said is there anything you agree with, disagree on? Let's have a conversation down in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.